The message you're about to listen to is brought to you by the Enthronement House Christian Center, a church with the mandate to activate and actualize God's royalty in you. Fasten your seatbelt. Get ready for a ride as God's servant brings you the anointed word of God that will change your life forever. And now, the ministry of the senior pastor, Enthronement Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. I woke up this morning uh, with a word from God. Uh, there are times that you have a word, the word of God, but there's, there's also times when God gives you a word from Him. Um, and the Lord began to deal with me about the subject of uh, power generation as against the subject of power operation. Power generation and power operation. It's important for us to understand that power is not a mystery. Amen. Yeah, we love power operation, but for there to be power operation, there must be power generation. The example is the power we are using on site today is most likely generated off site. So, uh, power op generation, therefore, is a prerequisite uh, for power operation. Which means if you don't generate it, you, you can't operate it. There has to be some generation taking place behind the scene for power to op operate on the scene. Amen. And so many times, therefore, it means that the power you use on the scene is not generated on the scene. I've tried to explain that to most of the people who take prayer sessions for us and all that. But once a person is trying to generate power on the scene, Anybody who knows God and knows the power of God can detect the uh, the fallacy, you know, because the power you use on the scene must have been generated behind the scene. When you come on the scene, what you're doing is you're discharging that power. And why God was sharing that with me sometime, uh, to, to this morning is that, that some of us are trying to operate in things that we have not we're not generating, and we are sometimes. Uh, surprised that what you didn't generate is not operating but the order of god is that for you to operate it you have to take time to generate it and then the way you generate it is by spending adequate time in the presence of god before coming on time the ratio of fellowship will always be greater are you there the quantity of fellowship would always be greater than the quantity of ministry or else you'll be fake so here are people for instance trying to they want to pray for one hour on site but to pray for one hour on site the time you would have fellowship with god would have been more so the volume of time spent in fellowship will forever and should forever be larger and the volume of time spent in ministry. Now, it's in the place of fellowship that this power is generated. So you're generating it, you're generating it. And then when you come on the scene, what you have generated is what will now begin to operate. If you don't do it that way, you just get on the scene and you'll be joking. And that's why I want to say that it's important for every one of you here before coming for the service to generate the power needed for us all to operate on the scene. Now, one of the most destructive myths in the body of Christ as it relates to ministry is the Superman myth. The Superman myth. In other words, the Superman myth is that the pastor is one Superman that we all come to him to resolve our life's challenges. It's a myth because the only superman is Christ. Amen. Every other person is buoyed up by the intercession. Are you there? Both their personal prayers and the, and the prayer of the people 
that God has called them to assign to them. And one reason why some of you may not see the results you need may be that you are not in your way sowing into our lives the measure of prayer that we're sowing into your life. I want to share very briefly tonight that the, this morning that the only thing I added, there are many things, but the only fundamental thing that I added between the lockdown last year and this year was to effectively pray for my man and woman of God daily to effectively pray for them every day. So I was sharing with some of our ministers and I was sharing that I can tell exactly what we did for this ministry to pick off. And I'm confessing to you this morning that what the, the single thing I added after the lockdown to the equation of our ministry was spending adequate time, in my opinion, one hour daily praying for my own man and my woman of God. And I've, I've seen it really change our lives. And I want to give it to you this morning that please, there is benefit in praying for us. There is a way you will begin to see our grace manifest for you if you genuinely and sincerely pray for us and you're doing it with a very good heart. Not that you're just playing games. You're not doing with a you're genuine. You're doing with a very good heart, a very pure heart, pure intent. You will get more out of do, more than those that are coming to us for prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this issue of praying for your man of God and woman of God is vital. And in this workforce class, I want to put that before you, that you want to make it your ministry to pray for, for us. So here, Paul said something very powerful. Number one, he said, pray for us. This was a man who you presume to be the apostle of apostles saying, pray for us. We need your prayer. And Paul took time out to ask about this. Now, of all the apostles, Paul was the only one who asked for prayer. So I want to believe that Paul generated more results because he leveraged on the prayers of the saints for him. And from place to place, he was asking them to pray, to pray for, for him while the other apostles were forming Superman. Now, the next thing now said, very powerful stuff. He said, for we trust. I don't jump. It is in the details. <laughs> it is in the details. He said, for we trust that we have a good conscience. Now, number two, Paul was saying something here. He was connecting their capacity to function on the level of their conscience with the praying of God's people for them. Now, there's something in ministry called the testimony of your conscience. The testimony of your conscience. That is, Paul said at some point in Acts that herein do I always exercise myself to have a, con a conscience void of offense before God of man. There's something called the testimony of your conscience. I have taught ministers that if you have a heavy anointing on a weak conscience your impact will be weak but if the anointing if you even have a weak anointing and it's on a heavy conscience the impact will be strong then if you have a heavy anointing on a good conscience the impact will be limitless this explains ladies and gentlemen why many times when you are preaching what you don't do it doesn't work because as you are preaching it, your conscience is either accusing you or excusing you. You cannot preach something you don't do and have impact. The reason because your conscience, will, your conscience will take away from the conviction needed to make that impact. And once you remove conviction and a good conscience from ministry, we're just joking. Hallelujah. So what he was now saying here is we trust that our conscience is good. 
In other words, something in us has decided to do what is right. But we're now praying, we're now asking for you to pray for us so that our conduct will match up with the goodness of our conscience. Are you getting what I'm saying here? What he's saying, therefore, is that if people are not properly prayed for, your leaders are not properly prayed for, there can be a gap between the goodness of their conscience and the execution of that good, in which case it would lead to a weakness of impact in your life. So tell anybody, pray for us. Now, again, when you have to understand this, now you know that many times we want to do good in us. But we don't always live up to the quality of the good that we want to do. What is saying, therefore, that what can bridge the gap between the good in you and the good you do is the volume of prayer offered for you. The volume of prayer offered for you. The gravity of this, therefore, is that if we don't pray, then the ministry will never be able to, in actuality, match up to the thing inside. Hallelujah. Now, the beautiful thing about this also is that, you know, God sees the conscience, sees everybody's heart. And then, you know, may honor. But the people may be affected by their inability to live on the level of their conscience. The second reason why Paul said they should pray for them, he now said, he said, in all things, I said, we are also willing to live honestly. Now, in leadership, let me explain something about leadership. In leadership, one of the greatest temptations in leadership is the temptation to be dishonest. Amen? The temptation to be dishonest. Uh, I have shared with you one day, and what is honesty? Basically, honesty is purity of motive. Purity of motive. I've shared with you one day how that I wanted to bring a, a particular pastor to our church. And... Uh, this pastor has this culture of every time he, there are pastors like that, every time, we are not like that, every time they preach, they must raise offering. We are not like that, but there are pastors that every time they teach and preach, they must raise offering. So he, this pastor is someone like that, the senior minister, every time he preaches, he will raise offerings. I'm not saying he's wrong, because even when I go to preach for my sons, one of the things I'm thinking of is how to ensure that the budget of the meeting is met and that they don't host us at a loss. So a father should do that, that, okay, how are the bills? But we just don't do that in our, our own this thing. So that day I had planned I was going to bring this minister of God to preach for us. And somewhere in my heart, a thought crept in and said, eh, hey, he will now help us raise money. I, and I told my wife and I said, this thing that just crept into my heart is not good. And I told my wife that until I can be sure that I'm bringing this minister, not because it's going to raise money, but because it's going to bless our people, we're not going to bring him. That is an example. But listen to me, the higher you go in life, the more opportunities to be dishonest will present itself to you. To be dishonest financially, to be dishonest ministerially, to even personally preach things, not for the benefit of the people, but for, are you getting what I'm saying? And it's a very thin line. So Paul was now praying that the second reason why you should pray for us is so that we would always act from a place of honesty. That we would always function from a place of honesty. Honesty also means we would always function from a place of having the best interest of the people we lead at heart. And, and God has helped me remarkably in this regard. As I, as I preach uh, and I, as I observe my leadership over uh, almost two or so, two more decades now, there is only once in my leadership, and it still haunts me till tomorrow, where I acted not in the best interest of someone who was under my leadership. Only once. It was in a marriage, you know, where you knew that somebody should not marry somebody, but because you didn't want to Allah 
and because you didn't want offense and because you didn't want oh, oh ah, twice and because you didn't want anybody to say anything and because you didn't want your daughters to not be married you put your seal on something you knew was not why are you looking at me like you have had your own experiences Amen. so don't look at me like there's accusation in your eyes <laughs> Amen. but i knew that this was wrong and that this would not work and i still endorsed it for whatever reason because it haunts me till tomorrow it haunts me till tomorrow uh, because I have learned over time that whenever you have reservations as a pastor about something and you don't speak of, the end of it never, never ends well. So I have learned also that one of the ways God helps God's people is by putting reservation in the heart of their pastor. That reservation is a check, it's a sign. And I've learned in every area where I have not, I've had the reservation and I either, either refused to say it because I didn't want to offend them or because I didn't want them to misrepresent it or misunderstand it every time as a leader that I've had that reservation in, for, in, uh, in leading people and I didn't say it. It has never ended well. Amen. So, of course, in doing that, that means that if I have reservations and I didn't say it, that means I was dishonest. But now he's also saying, pray for us. <laughs> that we would be the kind of people who would live honestly, honestly. Which means, we will tell you as it is. We won't hide the truth for you, from you. We'll tell you exactly. We won't be now because as you rise again, you'll be, you know, the older you grow, the more you find out people don't want truth. So the more you begin to caution yourself, you begin to caution yourself and telling people the truth. Because we don't respond well to it. In fact, I'm even there now. So you want to pray for us that even when we don't want to tell you the truth to your face, something anointing will just tell them. <laughs> so we're saying pray so that we would live honestly. We have a good conscience, but pray for us also that we are willing to live honestly in all things. Now, if you do these two things in prayer for us, then the impact of our ministry will be strong. So at some point, even though you have to give to us, you know, so at some point, money mattered. At a point in our ministry, money mattered. You know, someone, someone give money, hey! And you're supposed to give your leader money. I mean, if they are ministered to you in spiritual, at least once a month, you should have something from your kana that you transfer to them. That's the law. Amen. But as we also rise, money doesn't do it for us anymore. That is not to say that. So the money you give to me is for you. It blesses you. You are connected. <laughs> But the prayer you pray for us is for us. So you hear older ministers say, please pray, pray, pray. And at the, at the risk of sounding, uh, I don't know, but just pray for us. Wake up daily and pray for us. Pray for our marriages. Pray for our children. Also, you pray because we can solve your problems or you can't solve our own. Hello? That, that's, so, I, so I explained to our workers that sometimes when you're in point leadership, it's a very difficult place to be. It's a difficult place to be because we can't take our problems in that sense to our authority figures, except it's out of hand. Because if we take it to them, we lose credibility. Neither can we take our problems to you because you can't solve it. So we're in that space where we can't take our problems up and we can't take our problems. It's a very dark place. So you want to pray daily for us that, the, that we have the capacity to live honestly according to the testimony of our conscience. And you know, 
my dream in this church as I round up this discourse is I want to be able to sleep all night and come to church to minister and I won't know that I slept all night. Well, we are not there yet. My wife is laughing. And I know why she's laughing, she's saying it's impossible. And she, I know that it was, but I'm just telling you that my dream, I want to be able to just sleep on Friday all night, sleep on Saturday all night, and just come to church and be carried by the prayers. My wife, I know you don't believe it. Is it a dream, Abby? No, baby, don't, I will still do it. And when we get there, I can sleep all night Friday, sleep all night on Saturday, come and still minister powerfully. Because each and every one of you would have brought something there. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the truth is the effort of all of us cannot be compared to the effort of one of us. So pray for us. Pray for us. So I expect that every service, every worker here, at least you, one, one hour, you are praying. Now let me also explain love. Love is not praying because you are the one who is going to minister. That is performance. Love is praying for a ministry, whether you are ministering or not. When your prayer increases because you will minister, it's because you are, you are performance driven. But when you are praying because you even mean you, are, you don't even care with me, you are praying for the service, let God move it, then you are in love. And God rewards people who are love driven much more than He rewards people who are performance driven. I'm looking at the choir right now. Will you pray? The day you can begin to pray when someone else is ministering, like you pray when you will minister, you no longer struggle. Because God sees those kind of things. And the beauty of God, it is what God sees in the secret that he rewards openly. So I'm saying in essence this morning, pray for us. Hallelujah. And as you do that, what we are seeing, you will see in the name of the Lord Jesus. What are some things you should pray? Let me give you some examples. Number one, expose everybody around us that does not have our best interest at heart. Give you some prayer points. I'm just telling you what I pray. Expose everyone around them that does not have their best interest at heart. It is not the people that are far from you that can hurt you. It's the people close to you. Expose them. What are, what are you to pray for us? Let their head not lack oil, oh God. Keep the oil on their head fresh. Keep the oil on their head fresh. What are you to pray for us? Surround them with errands and halls. Surround them with errands and halls. Errands and halls. People who in effect are lifting up their hand, not pulling it down. Surround them with errands and halls. What are you to pray for us? Give them a right regard of particular things to be done, O God. Give them a right regard of particular things to be done, O God. Give them a right regard of particular things to be done. Let every decision they take be the right one. What are you to pray for us? Concerning their marriages, unite them. Are you there? Let their marriages work. Nothing damages the testimony of a ministry like a broken marriage. Let their marriages work. Oh God. Knit their hearts together in law. Let one be joined to another. Are you there? What are you to pray for them? Raise up mighty sons of encouragement around them. Raise up mighty sons of encouragement. Mighty sons and daughters of encouragement around them. What are you to pray for them? Have mercy on them, O oh God. Let your strength be made perfect in their weaknesses. Let your grace be sufficient for them. Let your strength be made perfect in their weaknesses. Let your grace be sufficient for them. What are you to pray for them? O oh God, make them that faithful priest who would only do according to what is right or what you have in your heart and mind and establish a priestly house forever. You get the message from somebody. Listen to it. Make them that faithful priest who would only do according to what you have in your heart and mind and establish their priestly house forever. Let your grace be sufficient for them. Let your grace abound to them in the name of the Lord Jesus. What are you to pray for them? Give me houses for them. Make me a blessing to them. 
Give me cars for them. Give me lands for them. Make me a blessing to them, O oh God. What are you to pray for them? Make me a son of encouragement. Make me a son to them that is better than seven sons. What are you to pray for them? Lord, make me a restorer of their life, a nourisher of their old age. Make me a restorer of their life, a nourisher of their old age. What are you to pray for them? Fill them with joy and peace in believing that they may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill them with joy and peace in believing that they are mad. Now, now the reason because leadership can be very discouraging sometimes. Fill them with joy and peace in believing that they may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. What are you to pray for them? Give them boldness, utterance, that may, they may make known the mystery of Christ as they ought. Let me say it in Yoruba. These people's lives we are talking about. Don't be talking about it with, with timidity. Be bold to declare what God wants the people to, to know. What are you praying for them? Let your mercy abound towards them. Sufficient for them. What are you to pray for them? Take authority over Satan at their right hand side. Set a fair meet to Zakat chapter 3 upon there. You pray for them. You pray. You know what's going to happen as you do that? The grace will begin to show up in your life. You're going to see certain things happen. It begins to operate. Ministry was genuineness. So these things are things that... It's not as you tell them. You don't have to tell them. Just be doing it. And you know the beauty? It's around the Bible says the husbandman that labors shall be first partakers of the fruit. Let me explain what it means. It means when you labor over us, you'll be the first to partake of what we have. The husbandman that labors shall be first partakers of the fruit. So when you labor over a thing, you, the, the first partakers, what the Bible calls in Greek, prototokos, the first partakers. Huh? And I pray that grace will abound to you.